Hello everyone, it's Phil here from 121 IELTS. And in today's video, we are going to be looking at how to write examples for an IELTS writing task to opinion essay. We will have a look at how to write specific examples for one of the examples in this essay. And we're going to look at how to write an example for a hypothetical situation. I'll be joined by some of my students and together we'll try and generate some ideas and some relevant, specific examples. When we write example sentences, we've got to think about what is the purpose. So remember, we're trying to support the idea that was in your topic sentence. Your examples do not need to be true, so you can make them up if you want, but they do have to be believable. This is a problem that a lot of people have. They make up examples and they're not very believable. We do not want extreme examples. Any examples that involve lots of people dying, lots of people being kidnapped, all these kind of very extreme examples I sometimes see. Uh, essays, these are not academic examples. Uh, so don't try and have really extreme examples. We never want to write personal examples because uh, it's just simply not academic. And try avoiding using made up statistics. You can use statistics, but this goes back to the second point here. Your examples need to be believable. So you can make up statistics, but if you do that, they've got to be believable statistics. Otherwise, it's not going to be a believable example, and therefore the example does not support your idea. If you're ever giving an example of a solution, you also need to show a result. So quite often people will go, okay, this is an example of my solution, and they don't mention if it worked or not. You don't show that the solution was effective, then it's not supporting your main idea. But this goes back to what we were saying here. We are trying to support the idea that you introduced. So if there's no actual um, result of a solution, successful result, it's not supporting your idea. So the question that we started a few weeks ago was some people think that there should be a complete ban on all forms of advertising. To what extent do you agree or disagree? The first topic sentence that we need to support, and remember, because we've got this very nice four-part structure for our topic sentences, it's very easy to find out what our main idea is. The main idea is the final part. One reason I disagree that advertisements ought to be prohibited is that they educate people about new products. So if we're thinking about giving examples for this, we want to think about something that is specific. And I was thinking, think of an advert that has educated you about a product. We're trying to avoid personal examples, so we're not going to say, I saw, but we can definitely talk about the advert in general. Don't give me a whole sentence, just give me a company or a product that you've maybe seen an advert for, and you, th you thought that educated you about their product. Mary says, Amazon? And how has the ad educated you about Amazon? So Nambina has an interesting one. You said, the back of a package of cigarettes with sick people. Would you call that an advert? So I know exactly what you mean. You're talking about the, the horrible pictures on the cigarettes showing the damage they do. Is that an advert? Is that trying to get you to buy cigarettes? Now, so that, I would say, be very careful that that would be a warning. It's not an advert. So an advert is trying to get you to sell something. Those warnings definitely do educate you. So you've covered the educating part, but you're not covering the advertisement part. That is a, um, a government warning. And I'm sure the cigarette companies, if they had an opportunity, <laughs> would not put that government warning on their cigarettes. <laughs> so going back to looking at what Mary was saying uh, with Amazon. So she said, this company offers a variety of products that are available to deliver worldwide. Exactly. Wonderful. They've educated you about what they do. Uh, oh, my friend, a mutual funds advert. Okay. So how, how has a mutual funds advert educated you? So my friend says, they educate people about saving money and investing in education and life insurance. Okay, great. So these are the kind of things that we're gonna be looking for in our example. We've got, we're gonna think of a specific company that in some way has educated or educates people. You can use your own personal experience for that because I think everyone's seen an advert and almost all adverts inform you about their products. I don't know why Apple always comes to mind. It shows you the function of their products. So that'd be something. Mary has actually written uh, an example for us, and I wanted to point something out in this, because this is a very common mistake that people make. The, the content's really nice. We've got, for example, Amazon company offers a variety of products that are able to deliver worldwide. 
on a language thing. Amazon company. Is this okay or is there a problem here? Nabila says no company yet. So in English, we do not put the word company after a company. So I don't say Apple company, Amazon company, especially if it's a well-known brand, you can just write like this. If you think it's a really unheard of brand that you would like to inform someone that there's no company, what you could do, you could write company, Amazon offers, and then this expression, X of Y, what does it need? Yeah, uh, we're not talking about a specific variety, but we're talking about a, a variety in general. So we're using ah. the company Amazon offers a variety of products that so here we can say that they are, because you want a subject, they are able to deliver worldwide. Okay, so let's go back to our idea that we, what's important here for the examples, very specific. So this is wonderful, we like that. It offers a variety of products. Now remember what the question or our main idea is, they educate people about products. Is there anything in this example talking about educating? And is there anything in this example talking about advertisements? Okay, so we need to add these elements. It's good content, but we just need a little bit extra to make this a good example. Could you try rewriting this or how would you change this second part so that we cover the educating and the advertisements? Let's have a look at this whole sentence. For example, the company Amazon teaches their customers how to use some of, some of its products. So we've now definitely got the educate. We've got the specifics, but we haven't got anything about advertisements. So the company Amazon teaches their customers how. So if we have their customers and its products, this is a little bit strange in grammar. The company Amazon teach their customers how to use some of not its products, because we've already said we're using their, so we want to be consistent here. How do you some of their products through video? So if we look at this now, we've got a specific example. We've got educating, and now we've got advertisement. So we're covering the main, the key areas of this example. Now we've got a good example. So the alternative was form. The company Amazon informed their customers about so here you have, do have the option of it can either be its customers or their customers, its customers about its products through the internet and television. So this would be good. We've got educating or edu educating people. We've got advertisements because you're talking about internet and television. It's specific. So now we have a good example. Okay, so that was Mary's example. Can Maitreya and Nabila come up with your own examples of this? And of course, anyone watching this at home on YouTube, don't forget to try and write your own examples rather than just watching the video. Make sure you participate in the lesson because that is how you're going to improve, how you're going to get better. So remember, anytime you're writing an example, you do want to signpost it just to make it really clear that you've moved from your explanation to your example. What we often say to you, don't use an excessive amount of cohesive devices. Uh, signposting your examples is really important. So uh, for example, or for instance, both of these work. So is there one mutual funds company or many mutual funds company? Only one mutual funds company. Okay, so if we're going to mention the word company, we're going to need this, the mutual, mutual funds company called HDFC. Is this singular or plural? So singular. So here, would it be educate or educates? Educates, exactly. The mutual funds company called HDFC educates their customers about their insurance products through online and TV. We just need a little bit more. What we could do here is we could write that and use these like compound nouns, online and TV advertisements. If you're using TV, it, both of these need to be capitalized because these are um, uh, acronym for a television. So we could say through online and TV advertisements. So you can do something through advertisements and our problem which we had originally is really this prepositional phrase. So I can't go through online. I can go through advertisements, but I don't, can't do through online. The other option here is a mutual funds company called HDFC, educates the customers about their insurance products online and on TV. The expression online already has a preposition within the expression, within the word online, that you don't have to go on online. 
because online already has the preposition so you can just say online and TV, but TV does not have a preposition built into it. So here we need on TV. Now let's check if it has all the elements of a good example. So is it specific? We've got a mutual funds company called HDFC. So they're very, very specific. They educate, okay, we were talking about educate. That's good. Is it clear we're talking about advertisements, about their insurance products online and on TV? Yeah, if we're using this expression, it's very clear that we are, we are referring to um, online and TV advertisements. So now this is a good example. I think this is going to be a little bit more difficult. So the second reason I do not agree is that many people will become unemployed. How are we going to give an example for this? Obviously, there has never been a complete ban on all forms of advertisement. So we can't give a specific example here. Could we maybe look at a smaller area? Has there been an area of advertising that has been banned in the past? Okay, so Mary says in Qatar, they banned advertising alcohol and cigarettes. Brilliant, we've got a, a true example here. And I think in many countries, they've banned advertising cigarettes. I know in the UK, they banned cigarette advertisements. This is where we can make something up. So they banned this. What is going to be the result? But this is one of those instances So just saying they banned alcohol and cigarette advertising isn't going to be sufficient. I need a result to support my main idea. What would be a good result here? Nabila says the result is advertisers lost their jobs. In Qatar, they banned advertising alcohol and cigarettes. This resulted in... So here, have we got a specific example? Yes, we've got a specific country. We've got a specific thing that was being advertised. There was a ban, which is exactly what the question is talking about. And there is a result. Lots of people lost their jobs. So this is a very specific, relevant example. You're showing that in the past, in this country, in Qatar, there has been a ban. And the result of this ban is advertisers lost their jobs. So it's very specific. It's definitely supporting our main idea because it's showing that well, if we ban all advertising, everyone's going to lose their jobs. Now, Bina said, could we uh, invent one about fast food? Yeah. Again, the key here is if you're inventing, and I think we should do that now because I think it's a really good skill to demonstrate that inventing examples is brilliant because if you can invent an example, then you can provide an example for anything. But remember, it's got to be believable. Can I say fast food advertising in the US has been banned? No, because there's a good, very good likelihood that your examiner is going to be American, British, or Canadian. So these are the three, uh, or Australians. So these are probably the four countries you really don't want to make up examples about because they're going to go, well, fast food advertising hasn't been banned in my country. You could maybe uh, give an example of a country that they're not going to be 100% sure of, or you could make a prediction. Let's choose a country. Uh, my choice is Nigeria. Okay, so it's a good chance that our examiner is not coming from Nigeria, and they probably are not experts in Nigeria. So this is a nice random country in Nigeria. How would we word the rest of it? So we're making up something about fast food, and we don't want to show that the result is that lots of people lost their jobs. So when the government banned advertising about the consumption, if the government did this in the past, not this result, this resulted. This resulted in a lot of unemployed advertisers thinking that this would work. Is this believable? Yeah. So we've got a specific example. It looks believable. I'm just going to put in the four examples so this looks complete. If we don't want to actually say this has happened, could we maybe say, come up with a prediction? This would be another way of maybe using a made up example. And if we're using, yeah, predictions. So what I'm thinking of here, I could use some conditionals, which is going to be a really nice grammatical way of giving examples. So I'm going to show you how to start it. It's predicted that if the government ban advertising about the consumption of fast food, so here we want the second conditional. What do I have to create a second conditional? Would not be the excellence yet? So we need a subject. It would result in a lot of unemployed advertisers or Maybe I think this expression, unemployed advertisers, is a little bit awkward. It would result in a lot of, 
is a slightly more natural way. So this is a, an interesting way of making a prediction. We could use this in Nigeria. It's predicted that if the government banned advertising about the consumption of fast food, it would result in a lot of people in the advertising industry losing their jobs. Uh, Nabina says, why are we using the second conditional rather than the first conditional? Because it is an unlikely situation where, I guess it, it is possible here if in Nigeria, it is uh, predicted that if the government bans advertising, uh, will result in a lot of people in the advertising industry losing their jobs. But actually, I think here, both of these are going to work. You could use the first or the second. The second is showing that it's more unlikely. So with your conditionals, the closer to the zero conditional you are, the closer to fact. And the further you go to like third conditional, the more um, hypothetical it is. For example, in India, there was a ban on Coca-Cola. Remember, Coca-Cola is a proper noun, because it's a name. So for example, in India, there was a ban on Coca-Cola advertisements in 2005. And, and a lot of people uh, were unemployed. Better than were, what would be a better verb here? To show a change became, and a lot of people became unemployed. I think maybe showing that this directly came as a result of this. So maybe a lot of people became unemployed as a result. A lot of people who worked for Coca-Cola, make this as specific as possible. But what I'm trying to show you here, the whole idea of this is obviously, all advertising being banned has never happened. So there's no country in the world, apart from maybe North Korea, 99% of the countries in the world have never banned all forms of advertising. So it's going to be very, very difficult for us to give an example of everything being banned. But what you can think of is break down the thing you are giving an example of on a much smaller scale. Rather than banning everything, has one thing been banned? And then we can show that the result of one thing being banned is going to apply, be the same as the result of everything being banned. So anyone watching this at home, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I hope you found something in this useful. Good luck with your examples and your writing. I'll catch you all next time.